Uh, greetings from New York. I'm actually in a hotel room in Harlem right now, uh, ready for a conference. And so, uh, yeah, that's why you're getting me like this. Uh, but in any case, I'm really excited to have a chance to riff a little bit on my uh, piece, Doing Intersectionality, and I really want to thank you for actually taking the time to to read it. Uh, hopefully you didn't hate it, but if you did, uh, let me know. <laughs> so um, I guess I'll add just a couple of things. I'll, I'll kind of uh, do sort of stream of consciousness thing. Um, I jotted down some notes of some things that I think are... Uh, important here and then uh, yeah we can go from there so um, I guess I'd say one of the things that I was really hoping to get at in that piece is to say that intersectionality is hard on the one hand but to show that it also it can be done that um, yeah it can be done um, I think some of the, the, the concerns that I've always had about intersectionality is that some of us cannot not see it and other others of us just can't see it at all so like for me, when I think about gender, I'm thinking about gender as a raced and classed form of gender. But some people, when they think about gender, they just think of gender as an isolated category. So it's one of those things that I think that like, um, if, if you're a person of privilege, you have a lot of privilege, you never had to think in multiple terms, then you know you have to actually do a lot of labor to get there. But that's okay. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to start with that. But I wanted to say um, one of the questions, Benny, that you posed was, uh, are there things you would do differently or things you would add to this? And I wanted to say that, um, I've, I've, as always, but continuing to read a lot of Maria Lugones. And Lugones' uh, con conceptualization of intermeshing or interlocking oppressions, I think, actually does more for us in some ways than intersectionality. And I want to say that I don't quite understand her theory, so I'm hoping some of you smart grad students out there will um, help me out on this, but Lugona says that what 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 intersectionality does is it, it describes something, it's a description, that it names what is absent, but that it actually relies, because it relies on the construction of gender, which is something that people of color historically didn't have because it's a colonial construction, um, that all it does is it tells us what's absent. Um, and that a notion of intermeshing or interlocking oppressions actually more accurately helps us to think in terms of multiplicity and less in terms of separation, which is sort of what intersectionality can apply. And in fact, Lugona says, and this is a quote from her article on heterosexualism and coloniality, once intersectionality shows us what is missing, we had have ahead of us the task, <coughs> excuse me, of reconceptualizing the logic of the intersection so as to avoid separability. It is only when we perceive gender and race as intermeshed or fused that we actually see women of color. Wrap your head around that. So that's kind of the work that I'm playing with right now is sort of moving from intersectionality to sort of really thinking more deeply about these issues, um, which I think is an important direction to go. Uh, and I think it's important not only in terms of academics, but it's also important in terms of activism. Um, Lugonis is actually probably the best example, frankly, of an activist academic um, Lugonis has been a community activist forever, and she's amazing. So uh, if you look at her work, I think you really get a good sense of both what we should be thinking about in terms of interlocking oppressions, intermeshing oppressions, but also, as academics, how we should be thinking about our work in relation to activist communities. Um, and I think that's really important. And I think that's what I try to do is both learn from activist communities, but also offer what I can. Um, and theorizing about intersectionality is something that... Um, I can offer, but I tell you, I'm here at this conference right now in New York, which is um, to to honor Harry Hay, who's a great queer, uh, gay, visionary activist. And I'm here both representing the University of Wisconsin, but also the organization I work with, Against Equality. And the activists I work with in Against Equality, like, I've learned more about intersectionality from Ryan Conrad and Yasmin Nair than um, basically anybody except for, you know, Marsha Houston, Kimberly Crenshaw, and uh, Maria Lugones. So... You know, I think it's a, a good thing to have a sort of symbiotic relationship there. Um, yeah, I, I guess on the last note, just a quick plug. Uh, my book, edited book with Cindy Griffin, Standing in the Intersection, Feminist Voices, Feminist Practices, and Communication Studies from SUNY Press, just came out hot off the press. Um, I hope that you will buy it uh, and read it. It's mostly about rhetoric, but it has good theoretical help for a lot. So anyway... Uh, 
that's all I have to say. Thanks for having me do this. I don't know if that's what you wanted, but um, yeah. Bye.